So I will call to order the Committee on Legislative Matters for October 12, 2016. Um, have you already called the roll? You probably have already called. Uh, no, Councilor Murphy? I'm here. Councilor O'Donnell? Here. Councilor Chair? Here. And no public comment because there's no public here. Maybe they'll come later. So the next thing is to approve the minutes of September 12, 2016. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Good. Um, you're on, Carolyn. I am. I sound yeah. Like Walk in the door, and we're ready for you. Uh, first item is was referred to us on September 15th concerning Northampton Code of Ordinances, Section 350, Attachment 7, regarding large-scale ground-mounted solar array systems for urban residential B, urban residential A, suburban residential, and rural residential. And we have Carolyn freshly in the door to present to us. You're on. Um, this is really, these modifications are really a cleanup um, as described in the legal notice and this ordinance. So it's not making any changes to um, setbacks and the provisions that were originally adopted in 2012. Um, they, for some reason, it never got codified on the e-code and on the online version. And so then when we went back to make changes to those four districts, we pulled the e-code version thinking that was the latest and greatest. But no. <laughs> and it didn't include this. So it wasn't until someone um, asked about doing a ground-mounted system that we realized that there was a big missing hole there. So, and actually went to the planning board for public hearing. There was no comment. The planning board did wonder if there was a reason to look at any modifications um, and in the end decided not to um, look at modifying anything that from the original that was adopted in 2012. And the setbacks are all the same, or they're the same for the four. Right. And the idea is these are big systems, these aren't, these aren't accessory systems to residential or, or agriculture, these are sort of a standalone use. So the setbacks are larger, greater than what would be allowed for other typical uses that you would see. Oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, maybe to that point, elsewhere, like another bullet, um, it says accessory solar, photovoltaic, PV, ground mounted mm -hmm. on a parcel with any building slash use, provided that the PV is sized to generate no more than 100%. Or eight kilowatts of the annual projected electric use of the non-PV building use, same setbacks as for attached accessory structures. Right. So, how, what's the difference? Just size. So, well, it's size. So that provision is for um, the situation where you're creating an accessory system that supports the principal use on the property, and so we're going to treat those the same as garages and workshops and any other accessory structure that. Um, a residence or a homeowner or a business might have on their property, whereas this is its own, you know, standalone use, um, and tip and these are much bigger than the accessory um, systems, which might be four or five panels. This could be, you know, 100 or 200 panels. This is, um, is this mostly for generating power to sell back yes. to the grid? On yes, the yes, yes, that's old right. Old fields and stuff. Right, so this is um, an example that would be the landfill system that was just um, uh. approved um, a few months ago. Um, even though there's a landfill there, they both function as sort of dis discrete systems. Um, and that's, you know, much larger system. So that requires um, the greater setback, and that's sort of centralized in the Center of the yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure in other parts of this section there's a definition of large scale. What is that? Because it is yes. Um, so it's in the. Um, let me just see. I don't think it um, is in the things we have. Is it? Yeah. No, it's under the. Um, it's under the section two. Yeah, the definitions. Thanks. I didn't um, think to bring that. I actually have it. Really. Sure. Um, just a definition. Solar, photovoltaic, PV, large-scale, ground-mounted, 
a solar photovoltaic system and related, ex um, and related accessory structures that is structurally mounted on the ground and is not roof mounted and has a minimum rated electric power output of 250 kilowatts uh, direct current. So it's described by its current, not its geographic size right. or physical size. Um, yes, um, but the intention is not to sort of minimally it's X, but it can go beyond that. So that's its minimum, yeah. 250 yeah. and up. Yeah. And it's on the ground, obviously. Yeah. So theoretically, if technology improves and you can do that with a smaller system, if that's still going right. on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And this starts with B, so there's no, this doesn't happen in C? Right. So um, with C, um, it's not an issue. And the other districts we've already, um, the other districts, they, it was never left off. For some reason, these districts never got uploaded to the web. So the other ones are, have all been taken, were taken care of originally in 2012. That's interesting. So did we theoretically do it? I mean, I'm trying to understand how it didn't get connected. So it was adopted. So we have the signed language in 2012. For all the districts. For all the districts. And then once it gets signed, it gets sent to general code. Right. General code then uploads it, on it. The and for whatever reason, they got half of the districts, but not these. And then the reason why we have to go back through public hearing is because then when City Council adopted up further changes to those districts, it, it, it was inadvertently left we, off. So then you're adopting a new section of SR with, with without nothing. Without that, even without though it was previously that. approved. Exactly. So then it looks like that's a pure, it, it acted as though a pure substitution happened and without. purposely leaving this out, which that was not the intent. So that's why we have to go back through the public hearing process for these districts. Which you've already had with the planning board. Yes. Okay. And nothing came from that. Right. Okay. Any other? So it exists in all the other <coughs> zones, just these. Yes. <laughs> the magic of the internet. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Carolyn? No. no questions. Do you want to change the, there's a I typo on yeah. the title of the document. We should probably correct. Yeah, we'll be back again doing this. <laughs> yeah, if I can, I'd actually like to make a um, slightly more comprehensive suggestion. There, there are four separate ordinances, but they pretty much do the same thing as, as we've noted. Um, so I would suggest that we actually take the three and combine them in one ordinance. Just have it say section one, two, three, and four. Um, and then I would like to correct the title and some of the enacting language, which is, which is wrong. Um, so I would, I mean, to, I, I would strike, starting with the title, if you take, if you take 16.154, which is the first one, which is URB, as sort of the template that we would dump everything into, I would suggest it just says 16.158, an ordinance, and then it should say relative to photovoltaic systems and related accessory structures in various zoning districts. Then I would get rid of the following paragraph, which we don't need. And then I would get rid of the word ordinance again, which I don't know why it's in there again. And so we would then say, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be ordained by the city council, et cetera, et cetera, that's section one. Um, and then I think we need to say for each one, in turn, um, that, for example, section 350 of the Code of Ordinances, attachment, whatever it may be, um, in, in this case URB, attachment seven, table of use and dimensional regulations for urban residential B, be amended by adding the following bullet in the list of uses, allowed by special permission. If that's clear, and then I would just like to do that for each of these, because the language has to be changed anyway, because it's not quite right, and I figured we might just put them in one. Because it's simple. so I know it's a complicated thing. I just say. 
feedback on that suggestion? Um, on, on the surface, I think it makes sense. I think that, frankly, is what happened the first time around. Everything was packed into one and had reference to, be, to put this into all the different districts, and I think that's why, why some of these were left off because the people at General Code didn't quite get that they needed to plug it in in each of the different places. That's what seemed to have happened. So it may not happen the second time around, and we can certainly <coughs> check, you know, now that it happened, we could double check with them to make sure they had it uploaded correctly. Um, but frankly, that's why I separated out into four different ordinances so that it was clear they were gonna do, take it, would, would it arise that you may at some point want to change it in B? I mean, obviously you could, as as individual ordinances, you could just change one of them or you could change a section if we turn it into one big ordinance. Does it make a difference? It doesn't make a difference because once you all adopt it, when it gets up, when it gets codified, it's going to be in its own separate slot. Anyway. Anyway. Only with the same, referring to the to one ordinance for the changes in each of the zones. Right, because each each district has its own separate table. So when you go to that district, you see all the uses, the allowed uses. Um, so it would get split out again. Yeah, I mean we have ordinances with separate sections that amend to make the stormwater ordinance amended like a bunch of different sections in this I don't think that in in of itself would cause the e code to not upload the changes. That, would, that yeah, would I, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I, we I would certainly follow up yeah. with them to make sure. That Somebody's going to prove it this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Um, I'm just that I just raised that okay. as an issue. Is well, that's what I think happened the first time. Fair enough. And or if there's sep four separate ordinances, and I just want to correct the language four times. So. Yeah. Take your Again, I'm not arguing anything. Mm -hmm. It's simpler for you guys to do it this way. It's fine. So that's my suggestion. So which version do you want to second? <laughs> <laughs> that was a motion, so. I'll second this one. Which, which version? <laughs> that's <very> <laughs> Leaving it the way it is or changing it? Changing. Changing. So if we're going to change it. Pam, you got the changes? Um, no, but I'll work with Councilor O'Donnell. Do you want me to just, want to just again just run through it one more time just so that for the folks watching at home okay they know what we're doing so um <clears throat> it would say 16.158 an ordinance relative to photovoltaic systems and related accessory structures in various zoning districts um we'd strike the next paragraph that begins an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts. We strike the additional word ordinance in the middle of the page. And then we pick up with an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the city council, et cetera, et cetera. That's the top of the, of the unified ordinance. And then each of these ordinances will be section one, two, three, and four in turn, and they will all begin with language with the following structure. That section 350 of the Code of Ordinances, attachment, and then whatever attachment it is. Yeah. Table of use and dimensional regulations for, and then whatever zone it's for. Be amended by adding the following bullet in the list of uses allowed by special permit, et cetera, et cetera. And then have the ordinance and then go to the next section. Got it? Yep. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. And that's what you seconded. Any more discussion? No. Any more? No? You're happy? All in favor? I uh, opposed. No, oh, good. Excellent. This before this new version goes back to Council One Hundred by Alan, because I think he looked at these. Didn't he? My 
Yes. Yeah. So we may want to just gaze at our rewrite before we get it to council. But if you want to imagine, we can have any trouble. Okay. We're going to that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You Stop it again. Or no? On this? We voted on the amendment, but not the recommendation. Right. So. Yeah. So now that we have an amended Second. positive recommendation. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's page one. And <laughs> oh, yes. That's page okay. one. Okay. Um, and look at that. Parking again. I don't refer to committee again on September 15, 2016 regarding changes to the Northampton Code of Ordinances relating to parking. And uh, since we have the Chairman of the Parking and Transportation Commission here, why don't you walk us through these? Sure. You and these have all been through they have. transportation park. Okay. So you I would note that there was no public comment at that time. There's no public comment today. Well, let's, um, wait a minute. We now have a member of the public. At oh, least sure. for a while longer, remember the public. I'm just observing. Okay, so you have no comment on any of our business tonight? No, I'm just seeing what you guys do. <laughs> we'll give you a good show, I <laughs> So far, so good. All right, so I guess we have no public comments. So. Well, how about this? You're doing a great job. <laughs> Excellent. We'll always accept that comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, start with the easiest one is 16.166, which is the St. Conifley lot, which is apparently 21 spaces from the Maplewood shops, just increasing the time limit to two hours. Um, I don't know if that was explicitly a recommendation from the study from the uh, Walker Parton consultants, but it's sort of in keeping with the spirit of increasing um, times. times. And, you know, in that particular place, I mean, it's like hair salons and stuff like that. But, uh, maybe more time. Don't want to leave with bad air. Exactly. <laughs> and um, do, do, do. and does it change fee? It does. It does. We go to 16.164. So 166 changed the time and 164 changes the fees. Yeah. That's a 1C. Oh, it changes the fees in the class and then we change the class in the others. And that, that fee change is actually an error. I don't think the fee is 15 cents per hour. So, okay. Yep. In my understanding, it's that it's, if, although it says 15 cents in the ordinance now, it's not actually the reality. Yeah, I agree. You don't believe in that. So. What is, what, do you want to put the reality in there? I, I think the reality is 25 cents. So that's is it in the mayor's? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, email. that's the first ordinance, 16.164. So, 164 relative to prices, do we want to correct it here if you know what it's supposed to be? No, that's what it, one, it, it does correct it. So the current 15 oh, 15 to 25. Hour, yeah. Oh, so we're not making any changes? No, so I, I thought what you were saying oh, was sorry. it was wrong, but it, the change is here, but the change is right here. Yeah. We don't have to change the change because the change is correct. Exactly. Excellent. You just need more change to park. Um, anyway. The other change. The other change. The other change. Okay. Do you know of another example of 1C? Last 1C? Hmm. Um, I don't offhand. We can certainly pull up the code if you're interested in looking. Um, looks like it's uh, a lot, mostly. So 1C, so we take it to two hours and we add a quarter. Correct? Because it's yep. 1C. And 1A goes up to a dollar an hour, 25 cent increase. Um, and it also adds a new class, class 1F, three hours, which we're not applying to anything right now, but I think the mayor intends We're making to a class for later. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to go through all these and take them as a group since we really can't Yeah, we could. do them as a group because... Um, yeah. And just again, the, the 1A, in this case, this, this is all Main Street, essentially. Um, and it's all going up on Main Street and Crafts Avenue and part of Bridge Street. Um, two hours time, and then the, it's going up from 75 cents to a dollar per hour. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
proud. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'll make a most positive recommendation uh, for these three as a group. So that's 16164, which is the dollars. 165, which changes them to two hours on Main Street, Bridge Street, and Crafts Avenue in Merrick Lane. And 166, which changes the spaces in the Maplewood shops. Exactly. Okay, we're moving all of those in group. Second? Second. Any more discussion on these? You, you guys have been through these with transportation and parking, so you're... Yeah, I mean, just... I mean, anecdotally, I've talked to at least one business owner downtown who is fine with it and kind of thinks the, the increase in time is especially useful to them and mm -hmm. thinks that's more important than the increase in money, mm -hmm. which has not been increased for a long time. Well, and frankly, I mean, you're picking up an hour per quarter, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, frankly, the market could probably bear more than that. I'm not going to recommend to change because, but yeah. it, it, it would seem the market would bear more than that, but I understand that you don't want to move too much cheese all at once, I guess. Yeah, and the only other point, I actually <coughs> think is that editorial made this point, is that the purpose of this is to, to regulate the parking supply, like, you know, not just... This isn't a revenue thing, it's a... Yeah, thing. then the question is, is it a quarter increase actually enough to make that sort of, have that economic effect? And I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I know the political reality is you probably would not want to just have a jump up a dollar. Mm -hmm. Probably would not be, uh, you know, and I don't mean that kind of selfishly. I mean, it would, be, it would be a shock to people and it wouldn't be good for business owners either. Mm -hmm. Was there any comment, since we don't have any public here tonight, about, you know, we've always, and I, the merchants try very hard to keep their employees off Main Street mm -hmm. so that their customers can park there. Mm -hmm. Are we facilitating that by making it two hours a pop? and making it more realistic for an employee to take a space that perhaps the merchants would like one of their customers to have? Or? That's a good question. I think, yeah, I think it intersects the whole question of employee parking in downtown, which is mm -hmm. a big challenge. I think it intersects the signage at, in the wayfinding mm -hmm. project. For, for the I mean, that was kind of why they did the long-term ones, because yeah. you could buy a long-term uh, pass, park at a meter, not need to feed it, and work a whole shift, on, you know, mm -hmm. and that, but that kept you in the non-prime locations, mm -hmm. so that you know the customers of your business could then park in front of the store. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to track if this exacerbates the problem of having employees running out the door and putting quarters in a meter right in front of their place of employment. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, and you, well, after the new year, as you will be able to play pay with an app. So mm -hmm. do they even need to leave their, the business? I mean, technically you're not allowed to do, you know, you're not supposed to feed that meter in whatever way you're feeding it, um, whatever the meter is. Yeah, you're supposed to but, move. Right. But if you don't even actually have, as an the employee goes. doesn't have to leave, like take a break to do it, mm -hmm. is that even more facilitated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if that app would let you re-up you get your two hours. Actually, well, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah it'd be interesting to see how you actually mark your vehicle. I think right. it might be linked to your license plate, so it might be that you, mm -hmm. you can't. You, you mm -hmm. physically have to move your car. Yeah, which would be in the spirit of what we're doing now. That you can't, you can't overtime the meter. You get your, you'll get your two hours, and then you're going to go somewhere else mm -hmm. for another two hours. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to hold this up over. I just wondered if you had no. any comment about that employee question, but something to be tracked. No, that's a that's an important question. Um, I have a feeling the public is reserving their most of their comments for the city council on this right. one. Mm -hmm. I've not heard as much as I thought I would from people. So. No. Well, I mean, I've heard sort of anecdotally. Yeah. Not. So we don't have any one here tonight. So probably, if we're going to see him, we'll see him in council. All right. So. This has been uh, made and seconded. Any more discussion? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. Aye. Okay. And that brings us to uh, 16172, an ordinance to amend a list of enforcing officers and penalties for non criminal disposition from Chapter 40 5 of the Code Book. And it was referred on October 6th. Did this go anywhere else, or just this just went to us? And I think this is what the police department and twenty dollars or something. Mm -hmm.
is like you can't skate or ride bicycles on the sidewalk, you can't throw snowballs at people. Uh, sidewalk surfboard, it says, roller skates. <laughs> public ways and downtown business. Too. Takes all the fun out of going downtown. Yeah. There's exemptions for like, you can have a baby carriage and normal things like that. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess so, this is like, if we catch them, we don't have to bring them to court. We can give them a Write them a ticket. Yeah. Write them a ticket. All right. And it would be enforced by the police department and it would be a $20 fine for any of these heinous infractions on a downtown. <laughs> That's right. All right. I don't know what the history of it is. I guess the police department may have asked for it. I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where its origin is. Um, it might have been another one of those things where that it maybe didn't wasn't attached to the police department. It might have made a fine for it, but not said who was supposed to enforce it or something. Uh -huh. Right. I think it just looks like there's no enforcement that's listed for it. So they okay. apply it to the police department as. The people that tell you not to ride your skateboard on sidewalk. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, um, I move a positive recommendation. Second. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then the last one is an ordinance to amend Schedule 3, limited time parking from Chapter 312 of the Code of Ordinances. It was sent here on the 6th, October 6th. Mm, this is also going to TPC. And did you guys talk about this one? We didn't get that this one was no. If it came on the six, we probably we did talk about it in concept. But you didn't make a recommendation. Yeah, this comes from um, the owner of the building at the new store, the Duke Dog Store, up on on King Street. On King Street. Yeah. Yeah, and the owner of the dog store. There's three spots there in front of their building, and they want two of them to be 15 minutes spaces. Um, and they came and asked. Transportation Parking Commission for this. We discussed it, but we didn't take any action. Um, and it looks like the mayor is submitting an ordinance to essentially do this. It's um, for two. This is for two spots. Yeah, it would be nice if the DPW produces a map for us to know, you know what's going on. We're 162 feet from a point 203 feet normally. Yeah. But I, I think that's essentially what this is, and otherwise just making it one hour um yeah one hour parking and it's, it's funny because I, I never see anyone parking in those spaces but apparently since they opened up they well they're not marked i don't think yeah not really. they're not marked so being that king street's very busy there people probably think it's two travel lanes and oh they are they are marked are they marked as yeah. spaces really yeah. oh yeah other signs let's say like no but i mean they are they are they're, Designated spaces yeah. okay. with white lines. Okay. So anyway. wait, this, how many? There's three or two spaces. How many spaces is this for? Um, an average space is like 18 feet long. Okay. So let's see how many feet. That's, like That's why the map would be nice. Right. Yeah. It does, does look like the King's, the 15 minute one, if you subtract yeah, 162 for 203, is about 40 feet. 20 feet. So that's two, two spaces. spaces. Yeah. And then behind that, yeah, and then behind that would be a one hour space. A one hour space, yeah. That's right. So it's total three spaces. The first one is one hour, and then the next two are 15. Would be. So one hour, 1 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Is that how we usually do it? Do we have other spaces eight? that start at 1 a.m.? It's kind of weird. You might, but it's Usually they're 8 to 6. Right. So it sounds like we got some fixing to do, because it would probably be nice to have that map for when it gets to council. So yep. maybe we let it go to transportation and parking and you guys yeah, sure. take the rough edges off yeah. of it and then we'll come back yeah, here and go to that would be great because yeah. I don't think the think it's going to hurt the doggies any for this to cycle through your committee yeah I think thank you yeah makes sense to do it that way yeah most of these are eight and nine o'clock right yeah eight to six or so so well, I mean, just I be can't, it might be okay 
can't imagine the reason So we, we want to postpone this to our next meeting and give transportation parking a crack at it and have a shot for a map so that when it gets to council, people actually know what we're talking about. Council. Do, you, do you want a map for this? Yeah, it'd be nice. Okay. For, well, for, might be helpful. Because you guys don't, you just had a meeting recently, right? Well, no, next Tuesday is we're going to have one, so I'll ask our traffic engineer for a map. Tuesday. If you can get it, yeah, because then we could, sure you have it. and right. then we could get it, Thank you. get it back, because it's a nice thing to do, but it doesn't seem like there's any real time crunch on it. So, um, that was that. Any new business pressing that didn't make it here? No, I don't think so. Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Sorry. I'm there. Hi. Hi.